Good evening. Welcome home. Delighted to see you tonight. I'm James Brewer Calvert, pastor at First Christian Church of Decatur, and my pronouns are he, his, and him, and it's an honor to be with you. Welcome home. I'm glad you're here. Um, tonight we've got three announcements and a meditation. So let's start with the announcements and uh, feel free to sign in. Feel free to let us know you're listening. Um, check in, update, and uh, remember that whatever you post is live and, and lasts forever. So just be careful uh, wherever you post here or anywhere else. And let's see, there we go. Okay, so, um, well, announcement number one, we are offering a summer series on Discover the Disciples. And this week, our associate pastor, Daniel Brower, will be preaching and teaching. She's teaching at 9.15 a.m. and preaching at 10.25 a.m. in the worship service. She will explore with us how we got to here from there. And her sermon is entitled, A Movement for Wholeness Begins. And that's what we are. The Disciples of Christ are a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. Announcement number two, we are lifting up the family of Herschel Maxey, age 97, who passed away on Tuesday. We loved him dearly and we remember Imogene and the Maxey family in our prayers. Herschel was an amazing guy. He was um, an architect and a devoted husband and father and grandfather. He was a friend to all. He was a true churchman, if I can use that term, a participant in the Keystone class, and he was a deacon, an elder emeritus, a former board moderator. He participated in the Fun and Travel Club and in the Christian Men's Fellowship and Wisdom Weavers. Uh, just a remarkable, amazing guy. Did you know that he changed the church marquee week in, week out for 10 years? And the only thing that stopped him was when he had uh, quadruple heart bypass surgery. And after that, um, it passed on to me and Tom and Quinn. He made fantastic Christmas wreaths, just the most beautiful. He'd walk out with a wreath and people would go, sold. Amazing. He was gentle and kind and smart, faithful, wise. We remember him and we keep his memory close. Thank you, Herschel, for the life and the love you shared. Announcement number three. On Monday, July 4th, on Independence Day, uh, we're inviting you to come out and enjoy the City of Decatur fireworks. Um, they're gonna be visible from the church lawn at First Christian Church of Decatur. So be our guests, be our guests, be our guests. Uh, starting at six o'clock, we will share free cookies and lemonade. We'll be selling hot dogs and hamburgers from the um, lawn and we uh, potato chips and we're going to have popcorn and bottles of water for sale. Um, access to restrooms and warm hospitality are free of charge. So bring your friends, your family, your picnic blanket and your chair. Um, volunteers, please arrive by five o'clock so that we can help serve and set up. Thank you. Thank you. Which leads us into our evening meditation. So we're speaking of celebrating America and celebrating our spirit of independence and our love for our country. The man without a country. The man without a country. That's the story of American Army Lieutenant Philip Nolan, who renounces his country during a trial of treason. A trial for treason, pardon me. Lieutenant Nolan is court-martialed and sentenced to spend the rest of his days at sea without so much as a word of news about the United States of America. The young American officer finds himself exiled from his country, spending 60 years at sea, during which time he has a lot of time to reflect. And he grows to love his country with a deep devotion. So here he is sailing on ships never allowed to hear or talk or be on land on his own country for 60 years. Uh, the short book was made into a made-for-TV movie, it was aired in 1973, 
The Man Without a Country starred Cliff Robertson, Bo Bridges, and Peter Strauss. The actor Cliff Robertson was chosen because he had to be someone who could age uh, 60 years. And, uh, and uh, growing and evolving from a young man filled with anger to an older, wiser man who has longing and loss and hope. Okay, so that's enough about the movie. So my family watched this in 1973 on our black and white television and sitting around our living room and I was 13 years old and when the closing credits rolled, I looked over at my father and I saw that my dad had tears streaming down his cheeks. I was really taken by his show of emotion um, and dad said, what a tragic and terrible thing to be without a country. And then he wept, his voice cracking, and he said, I love my country so much. That sticks with you. I remember my father's crying more than I remember the movie. Um, you know, he, um, he uh, loved the ideals and values and mores of our country. He defended our nation. George argued with our nation. My father loved our nation. He peacefully protested wrongs and injustices and an immoral war. He protected our freedoms and the Bill of Rights. He proudly displayed our nation's flag. George Calvert walked with Martin Luther King Jr. at the March on Washington. He lobbied countless times at the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C lobbying for resources and support and help for his beloved Harlem community. He secured millions of dollars to rebuild a ghetto with safe housing for very low income families. So that night, George wept. He understood that it would be a tragedy of epic proportion to be without the country he loved so much a love he felt with every fiber of his being. Nothing could be worse than to be shunned or banished, to be cut off from the land that he served and revered, a land that he challenged and changed. Such a loss would be a crying shame, and so he wept. Some people might say, and I've seen bumper stickers and I've actually heard people say this, America, love it or leave it. Love it or leave it. I believe that my father responded to such a statement by his actions, by his preaching for 50 years, and by the way he served in the community. His actions said loud and clear, America, love it and change it. Love the ideals. Love the people from all walks of life. Love the freedoms that we hold near and dear. And when necessary, change it. Change America for the betterment of one and all people. Serve to protect the rights of the last, the lost, and the least. Those are my father's actions for his nation that he loved so much. Love it or change it. That practice is in me too. There have been flashes and there's been moments in my life when it seemed easier somehow to be tempted to get up and leave, to be so frustrated with our nation that moving out seemed like the best option. I've been there, thought about that. But you and I, we are cut from different cloth. We're not quitters. We are Americans. And we praise what is good and decent and when we see wrongs, we seek to right them. As Teddy Kennedy said at his brother Robert F. Kennedy's funeral, he spoke in his eulogy saying, my brother need not be idealized or enlarged in death beyond what he was in life. To be remembered simply as a good and decent man who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. So last Sunday in worship, I had a beautiful opportunity to preach 
And when I get a chance to preach, I'm going to let it out. And I preached on building a spiritual house, dealing with 1 Peter chapter 6. That God calls us to be a singular spiritual house. One house. One house in which all of God's people are welcome and all people know that they belong in the presence of such a big love. Such a big, amazing love of God. I mentioned from the pulpit that we are a people coping with suffering. Barely coping with deep trauma and tragedy and trials. And I looked into your eyes. I looked at your faces and I saw you nodding all around the sanctuary. People were nodding. Yes, Lord, we are hurt and hurting. These days are so tough. Help us, Lord. Christ have mercy. COVID, pandemic, so much loss of life, gun violence and hate and fear in this land that we love in our state that we love, in our city that we love. It seems like every time we watch the evening news, there goes Georgia, front and center. Open carry laws enabled in Georgia. Voting rights suppression empowered in Georgia. Abortion restriction laws on the books in Georgia. False conspiracies spreaders coming to Georgia to spread their lies and promote their lies at the Georgia Tech Conference Center. People and communities divided in our restrictive silos here in Georgia. As Marvin Gaye said, makes me want to holler. Allow me to suggest that you do holler. Be a patriot. Be brave. Speak up. This week we had a great example of American patriotism in Cindy Hutchinson. Cindy Hutchinson, age 25, 26 at the most, was so disgusted and disappointed in what she witnessed in the White House in January of 2020 that she testified before the January 6th committee she testified under oath to bring outright lies and sedition into the light. Wow. So if she can be so brave, we can be so brave. So stand up, speak up, show up. People of privilege, we have a responsibility to be allies for our neighbors in need. Be aware of microaggressions. Be aware of systemic racism. If you see that one person, any person, is upset by biases, that is the one that you and I need to defend and protect. It's not their job to educate the privileged. That's our responsibility. That's my responsibility to educate myself. Our words have power, so be careful with the words you use and the actions you choose. Seek to do better the next time. If we make a mistake, try to be better the next time. Each generation should improve on what they've learned from the past. So men, stand up for women and neighbors whose right to their own bodies and health care choices are being legally stripped away. If you see one person's right is being diminished, then everyone's rights, including your own, can be taken, lost, and tossed away. So stand up. Speak up. Don't be afraid. Disciples of Christ, raise your voice and your countenance. Be positive. Be optimistic. Be hope-filled. We must not, cannot, shall not be silent or timid, acquiescing while folks who are fearful or hateful, folks who are discriminatory or prejudiced, dictate and dominate the direction of our nation state. We will not be silent. As they say, silence equals death. 
So let your light so shine. Let out your faith. Let out your faith in a great big love. A love who makes welcome everyone at Christ's big table where there is room for everyone. Let loose your love for Christ's church. And yes, for our nation as well. Our love for our nation. Each, the church and the nation, are bequeathed with open doors and open arms for the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Let such a love guide you to walk with your neighbors, to reach out and talk with your neighbors, to listen to the dispossessed and the dispirited, to go to the polls and participate in the civic process. Don't run away, run toward civic engagement. Be brave, my friends, be brave in the faith and be brave, my fellow Americans, to hold fast to your love for your country. Lieutenant Philip Nolan, the man without a country, grew to love his country with a deep devotion. May we grow to love and when necessary, change our, our nation, our country with a deep devotion, a change that makes the world better for you and for me and for all of us together. We can do this. We can. Yes, we can. All power be to the Creator and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's a joy to be with you. May God's blessings and peace be with you. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 9.15 for spiritual formation and 10.25 for worship. Our young people will have a special children's church during the service. And um, we're going to be leading them out and sharing God's love. So may God's blessings and peace be with you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Good night.